Hello everyone, it's Christy with Cottage Grove Quilt Company. Thank you for joining me in my quilt studio today for our first video tutorial in a while. So we've done them before. We're kicking off the series again um, to bring you great quilting education free right to your home. So today we're going to talk about panels. And so a lot of times, um, especially on our live shows on Thursday nights, we feature panels and we have what I like to call a plethora of panels um, because panels are a great way to start a quilt. They're a great way to get your quilt going. Um, I can take a panel and if it's a yard cut panel, um, so it's 36 inches wide by 45 with the fabric or you know, even, you know, 45 by 45, if it's a square one. Um, and I can take that panel and I can just add some borders to it. And that quilt's done. I can be a gift. I could have a gift ready for someone in under an hour or right at an hour for just the piecing part of it using a panel. I can take a panel and I can get six of them and stack them up together and make a explosion of a quilt that's called a one block wonder. Uh, lots of different things you can do with a panel. I love to take panels and start them and then put squares around them and other pieced units around them just to give kind of a bit of a pizzazz to them and make them pop. That's always a lot of fun. Kind of like the quilt that's behind me that I'm kind of in the process of working. This is actually a three panel quilt. And what this quilt is, and we still have a few of these kits available, is this center is a panel, then we piece an inner border, and then we make these squares that go around this inner border. And then we take another panel, and two other panels in fact, and square them up, cut them on the diagonal, and use them to turn the quilt and set it on point. It's quite a stunning undertake, but the quilt is phenomenal. It is so what's great about this quilt is it really takes that quilt and makes it extremely, extremely stunning. And everybody who sees this quilt and sees the progress on it say, oh my gosh, Christy, I could never do that. Honey, I'm telling you, it's three panels and some basic piecing. You can do this. But one of the big complaints I get about panels is simply this. They're not square. I get them home and I lay them on my cutting table and they're not square. I can't make them square. I don't know what to do. And and then if I, they're not square, then my whole quilt's off. And I don't want to use a not square panel. Well, I'm here to tell you I have seen a big problem with panels not being square. Panels are like any other fabric. They come printed. They roll them on the bolt. They're pulled. They're tugged. They're stretched. They're shipped. They're, you know, rolled and tugged and stretched again and shipped again. <laughs> and then they finally get to my store, okay? So they kind of have a process that they go through to get here. And when they arrive, the one of the first things we do is we cut them off the bolt. We do not leave our panels on the bolt. And we fold them up and put them in nice little baggies so they can go from our house to yours. So, but you still have to square them. They still don't come square. One of the things I wanted to do with today's tutorial was demonstrate to you several ideas and several techniques that you can do to square your panel. Now, um, what I like to do is to get some uh, foam insulation. You can get it at your local Home Depot or Lowe's, um, but I like to get some foam insulation that's about an inch or two thick and cut it four by four, four feet by four feet. And you're gonna say, Christy, four feet by four feet, how big of a panel do you think we're gonna need? Well, y'all fabric is 42 to 45 inches with the fabric and four feet's 48 inches. So you will use all four feet of it. So um, yeah, four foot by four foot. If you don't have anyone that can cut that for you, your local homes, Lowe's and Home Depot should be able to cut it for you. Or if you don't have a Home Depot or Lowe's, a local Harbor store would do. Um, the other thing you could do is just to get foam board at Michael's and duct tape the pieces together until you have four foot by four foot. But the idea is you need something squishy, something squishy, and it needs to be four foot by four foot, okay? So um, you can use an ironing board as long as it's big enough. It has to be really, really big. Um, but you know, 
I just use the foam board. That's for me what makes sense. So I'm gonna walk you over to my cutting table and we're gonna join the process there. You're also going to need a bunch of pins. Here's my chicken pins, my chicken pins. And you're also going to need a square ruler. So grab those tools and I will meet you at the cutting table. Okay, so I've made it back to my cutting table and um, when I went upstairs to my husband's shop and said, okay, I need a four foot by four foot insulation board. He says, yeah, sure, we have it. And then I got up there and it wasn't four foot by four foot. Mine's a little on the small side. Um, it's probably three foot by 24 inches. So we're just gonna demonstrate using this today and just know that it's best to use something four foot by four foot. And you can see mine is, what's that measure? What's that measure, Leroy? It measures about an inch thick. So this measures about an inch thick. And that's about the size you want, something that thick. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pin it using our pins. And those pins need to be able to be secured and go through the foam board. So an inch thick is about the right size. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our panel. And for today, I'm using the Missouri All-State Shop Hop panel. And we're gonna start laying it out and I'm going to walk you through how I get it squared up. Okay, we are in my sewing room. I've got my panel laid out and you can see when we zoom in close, hopefully I can do this, is when we look along here, even though I've got a nice right angle here, look at what happens as I go up. This starts out perfect at a nice right angle but as I go up you can see it is almost a half an, half an inch off the higher up I go and so that's the part that we got to make we got to pull this square so here's how I start this I lay this out I find a good right angle on the pattern of the panel and then I'm going to take my pens and I'm just using plain straight pens here and I'm just going to pin this sucker in place. I'm not going to go up and over. It's going to be like who sunk my battleship method. Okay. We're just sticking the pins. Probably, you know, somebody's going to ask how many inches apart? Probably, you know, a little bit bigger than my hands width. So about four inches. Okay. And then once I have those pinned across the bottom, using my straight ruler, making sure I'm lined up across my pin gauge, that is also all straight. Okay, so I've got that. You can see we're way off up here at the top. I'm now gonna pull this panel to where it should be lining up. And again, I'm just giving it a slight pull. And then once I do that, I'm gonna take my pins and again, about every three to four inches, I'm putting a pin in place. Just vertical, north and south. All right, and I'm just gonna keep doing that, and I do that all the way around to pull it in to squareness, okay? This is really, really important to go and do this all the way around the perimeter of your panel. Okay, so I've got that side done. And you wanna make sure it's everything. And you can see how I've got all these pens lined up. That one looks like I tug just a little too much and that it's a little bit bigger there than I wanted. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this around and come this direction. Okay, and again, I'm keeping this all straight. You know, I'm using these pens that I've already squared as a guide and then I'm tugging on the fabric underneath the ruler to bring everything in alignment. And then I'm going to stick a pin in place. And then we're gonna come down, all the way down, and see, and I have to go the other way. Sometimes you gotta tug one way, and then you tug a little bit the other way. And by tug, I'm, I'm seriously meaning a very gentle, gentle tug. Nothing too big. And again, I'm using my ruler to make sure I'm keeping the angle straight, All right? So I just follow this around and we just keep going down the pack here. 
with the ruler, keeping it square. And also by pinning it, you know, as you can see, when you start to get around to the third side and the fourth side, then you really, you know, it's, it's going to come together one way or the other. Again, I'm just putting these about every three to four inches. Okay, we're gonna turn and we're gonna come the other direction now. And you can see there's some fullness. There is some fullness. And that's okay. We're going to solve the fullness in a little bit. Let's first get it to be square, and then we'll worry about our fullness. Now you can see I'm tucking on this, and it's not wanting to give. Because I've pinned it so good up at the top. But, you know, we're going to give it a little bit more of a zhush to make it mined. There we go. And then this last side here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so once you've gotten your right angles and you've got it straightened up and it's all squared off, you are going to have some fullness. You can see I definitely have some fullness in here and some crinkles. All right, now that is where the next step comes into play that's very, very important. Go to the Walmart and get you a can of Faultless Heavy Finish Starching Spray. It's $2 and something a can unless it's gone up. Maybe it's 3 now. But get you a can of this faultless spray. And again, this is why we use foam insulation board. Could you do this on your design wall? Sure. I wouldn't do it. Because the next thing we're going to do is we are now going to spray starch this panel and really coat it with the spray starch. And I don't mean like a little coat. I mean like it needs to be saturated all the way through. And just really cover it. You can see I'm I'm giving it a heavy starch here. Because what's going to happen is, is now we're going to leave this sit for uh, probably overnight to where it can dry. That one's a little off here. Had to tug it and I don't want the tug to be so exact. That, uh, that's all you see. So I took that out a little bit and let that come into play. I mean, you're going to really spray this heavy, saturate it heavy, 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 and then let it sit, like I said, oh, ow, overnight. This is why you do an inch one, because um, you want to be sure those pins have some place to go and not your finger, like it just did mine. All right, and you're just going to spray that really, really good. And then we'll let it sit probably again overnight and then we'll come back and um, pull the pins out and you will be amazed at how much came out of it. Okay, well we're back. It's the next day. I have new clothes on so we know it's the next day. Um, so here is our panel that we um, worked on squaring yesterday and you can see it's all the starch is dry and those ripples have kind of eased up. So um, we're not gonna iron on our styrofoam because um, it would melt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of our little pins out and pull it out of the, I feel like I'm playing with a voodoo doll, but um, take all of our pins out around. I gotta find my chicken, here's my chicken. Whoops, I just dropped a pin. Good thing I can edit. <laughs> pin cushion over there. Huh? Pin cushion over there. Yeah, it's not the right pin cushion. Okay. 
these pins go in the chicken. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and remove these pins and get them all out. Make sure our iron is on and getting hot. Pull this. Now, the big thing is when we go to iron, we are not going to distort it. We're going to press. You know, I always tell people when I do talks for guilds and stuff that there's a difference between pressing and ironing. If we were working on dress shirts, we would be ironing, but we are pressing. So we just take that off of our foam board. Inside my foam board. All right, now we're going to press. So I'm gonna lay this out. And just give it a good press. And then what'll happen is, is when we take this over to our cutting table, you will see, and we'll show that here in a minute, that it really did square our panel back up. And again, this is just a little trick I do. Now, if you've got a panel like our cup of cheer panel, and you're going to cut it apart and use it as squares, you definitely, definitely want to go through this process because it'll just make all the difference in the world. And again, I didn't use a foam board quite big enough. You really want it to be four foot by four foot. That way you have plenty of space. I'm just getting it good and iron. And you can see when I iron it, it even flattens it out a little bit more. Okay. Now let's take this over to the cutting table. <laughs> Here it is, laid out, so pretty. Look at that. I can just see right along the lines here how on the cutting table, how it lines up so well. All right, so let's get my square and we're gonna come out and we're gonna just do this an inch outside of this and look at this beautiful right angle it's all lining up it's just so nice and then I'm able to trim down this panel to the size I want for my project and we're gonna go and do this corner and again I'm doing an inch outside that border just because I think that's all I need and we get it and it just lines up so perfectly it's amazing, you know, what a little bit of prep work will do for your project. And just look, it's just so sharp. I'm a firm believer in prepping our fabric and prepping our projects because we spend so much time and so much money on stuff that we don't want to be wasteful. And, you know, if we don't get it just right, when we start, then we'll have problems. Okay, so here we go. This one just needs a little bit extra of a cut because that top is a little longer and I came up off that. There we go. All right. And we have a nicely squared up panel and we've worked out so much of that fullness which is just great okay there's that and now we're going to do this side here come on down I had an extra swap of fabric up there. Come on. It's being difficult. I just love that when that happens. It's just, it's just attached by a thread and I keep expanding the thread. <laughs> okay, 
pull that off and then we just have this little bit here all right and just like that look at that we've got a nice squared up laid out panel and we've worked out a lot of the fullness so that my friends is how you get your panels prepped so that way we have a nice nice panel to work with as a start all right everybody have a great day and stay tuned for our next tutorial that should be coming out in about a week or less all right thank you bye bye mm -hmm.